Welcome to the Birchhaven residence. This is the front lobby. And one thing I want to point out while we're here is um, I had mentioned there was an existing cottage on the site and part of the lead process and you get credit for it is salvaging um, the, the materials and the demolition of the existing residence. So um, we did that. We had Habitat for Humanity out here. They reclaimed everything that they could. Uh, air conditioning, plumbing fixtures, they they just had free reign. They stripped everything out of it that they absolutely possibly could. Yeah. And you know one thing about Habitat, it goes to their local restore, if they have a restore in the yeah. area. Yeah. So if you're ever doing a project that involves deconstruction, make sure to call them up because they can take it and, and sell it and someone else can use it and it can benefit their, their organization. So. Yeah. There was aluminum siding on the outside of the existing cottage and we actually had neighbors come and strip all that siding off for them to build us a cabin in the woods somewhere right. in northern Michigan. So that siding lives somewhere else in the state now. But <clears throat> the coolest thing that the original cottage had was it had knotty cedar, real knotty cedar paneling throughout. There was no drywall in the existing cottage. So what we did as we salvaged, um, and Alex and his team really salvaged and stripped the existing cottage down, and we actually reused the original knotty cedar siding in various places throughout the house. So this happens to be the existing garage and it penetrates into the new construction of the house. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to sort of show that this was sort of the ghost of the cottage past. <coughs> so we, we used the siding here and it just, it's so warm and you can touch it and feel it and it, 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 it it brings the old place back to life, the old cottage back to life. So, um, I wanted to point that out. We'll, you'll see it on the ceilings when we go upstairs. And if Angela will sort of spin a little bit, you can see um, some of the really cool scallop uh, soffit that we reclaimed from the old cottage. Kind of like the, the up, upper trim. Yeah, all that is is exactly how it was in the old cottage. There was a this sort of balance mm -hmm. above the. The knotty cedar walls that would have been below before. Mm -hmm. So, maybe not the sexiest space in the house, but really cool space, really uh, functional space. And there's a lead credits associated with this. This is the mudroom, um, not your drab and dreary typical mudroom off the garage, but um, there's a great. It's a great place to come in, take your shoes off, wipe your feet hang up your um, gear, whatever it might be for what time of year it is, and the, the built-in shoe rack, so we can store things down here, and, and you can you do it from the side door, and you can actually do it, we just walked in the, in the front door, so you can kind of come and, and keep from tracking contaminants into the house by using this space. Yeah, when you think in you know, indoor air quality, usually it's ventilation that gets um, promoted quite a bit, but this is one small thing to keep, you know, like you said, contaminants off your feet that come in from cars or vehicles. Um, and I know for me personally, I've got a little toddler, so they're crawling around on the floor and who knows what they're putting in their mouth. So it's just one other simple way that, you know, when your mother always said, take your shoes off, you know, like this is really encourages you to do that and it has health impacts or benefits. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. and it's simple. It couldn't, it couldn't be more simple. Right, right. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't have to stand out or look odd. So. All right. All right, so we're coming down the main entry hall. <coughs> guest bathroom, laundry room, um, just kind of give you a feel for the house. We really tried to do a house that was fairly contemporary in style, but very warm and inviting and comfortable. So it's not star starkly modern, but it's very contemporary. You can see that this beautiful wood three panel door. Why don't you tell us about, this is the main living quarter, Yeah, welcome to um, the main living space, and you can see there's a lot going on in here. Above us is the, is the roof that the photovoltaic panels are sitting on. So you can sort of see what I talked about, rotating the design by 20 degrees, and notice the wood beams are not, they're, they're coming across at kind of a funky angle that you maybe wouldn't expect, but they're actually parallel with the roof structure. So the structure is simple, but the space ends up looking a little bit more complex than you would have imagined. So this is the great room, big vaulted space, uh, beautiful views out to the lake. Uh, we 
beautiful bar. Um, I'm looking at the uh, fireplace here, which I yeah, think it's all electric, right? Oh, it is a gas fireplace. Oh, gas fireplace. It's electric ignition, electric and it has ignition. Yeah. Uh, direct event. Yeah. So was there any conversation about using a conventional fireplace versus a sealed direct vent? Um, there, there, was, there was some, lots of discussions. Yeah. Whether to actually have a fireplace or not was right. one discussion because right. probably the most sustainable thing is to not have a fireplace. Right. But the client wanted a fireplace. Yeah, and from a health And I sort of wanted a fireplace. And from a health too, standpoint, so. you know, at least one would be the open, you know, um, conventional Right. Places, so right. So it does have a glass. glass. It does have glass doors. Yeah. And it does have electronic ignition. So we got yeah. the lead credits that we could. Yeah. But still have no fire. No, it makes a lot of sense <laughs> for something out here. So it's a yeah. sealed unit. Yeah. You know, to reduce any possible air leakage and electronic ignition. So. Yeah. Uh, why don't we quick take a look at the uh, kitchen and you can talk to us a little bit about some of the other uh, materials and resource choices you made. Uh, sure. Paints. Um, yeah. Type of content. What do you got going on in this house? Boy, there's lots of stuff going on, um, and it's stuff that we use all the time, and it's stuff that you can buy everywhere now. So right. there's low VOC paint, the trim paint, the wall paint, everything is low VOC. All the glues and adhesives, everything that got stuck to something else, all the caulks are all low VOC. Uh, you can look at the flooring, very durable. There's a du lots of durability um, credits in lead, in lead for homes. So the floors are all tile or um, bamboo, actually. This is beautiful bamboo flooring um, that runs throughout the house. Uh, just gorgeous, very durable, long-lasting. Um, plus, it's a rapidly renewable material. Bamboo is a grass more than a wood. So um, we use quartz countertops. Again, just super long-lasting, no toxicity, um, no glues or anything like that. Laminates and from like this sometimes have. Uh, super energy efficient appliances, energy star appliances everywhere that we possibly could. Um, and durability, like just things, simple stuff like a, a tile backsplash that keep, will keep the kitchen walls clean and, and last forever. Mm -hmm. Exhaust hoods. Um, Red Lobby did the kitchen design actually out of Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. They did a beautiful job with all the cabinetry in the bathrooms and um, the kitchen and other some other built-in stuff. So, is this hood range um, just directed out, or is it monitored through any ERV? Does it run through any ERV? I don't know if it's Alex. Do you know if the um, the hood runs through the ERV or is it direct exhaust? It's direct. Yeah. Exhaust. Okay. Yeah. So one real simple thing, but uh, even in new homes we see it where you get a hood range that sometimes is recirculating back at you. Um, or you know, you know, venting into the uh, attic, especially on remodels, uh, and so just a real simple thing to uh, draw out um, emissions, moisture. I see you have an electric stove, so you know that was the client's choice. Yeah. So we could have yeah. used the, there was an option to use natural gas, yeah. but the client chose the preferred electric. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And so if you use gas, you know, again more emissions. So just a real simple thing that's required in a lead home that we still don't see all the time in normal construction and being uh, vented or not. Recirculating back into the into the house. So, yeah. While we're here, I mean, there's the lighting that's all LED lighting throughout the house. The chandelier over the dining room table, all the recess cans, all the under counter, everything is 100% uh, LED, which is a no-brainer now. Five years ago, it was expensive, but it's really a no-brainer um, in residential and commercial. Um, while we're here, the windows are all um, Anderson windows, which I know Anderson's a sponsor of the Green Home Institute, so we can give them a plug for sure. Um, but they're beautiful. They're um, double glazed, low E glass, uh, energy star windows. Any yeah. reason you go with wood for more of the look? Yeah, we went with the, the wood interior just to have the warmth of, yeah. of... We've used a lot of wood, yeah. obviously. Um, wood doors, but yeah, we wanted to use the wood trim on the inside. Did you look at fiberglass at all as a, as a trade-off? I'm a big fan of Anderson windows. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of fiberglass, okay. and I'm definitely not a big fan of vinyl. Okay. Um, yeah, for yeah. other reasons. Yeah, yeah vinyl um, definitely is For other vinyl. reasons, but um, we did not look at fiberglass. Yeah. Um, we really, I think, between the construction team and the design team, we yeah. really, we, 
we really like Anderson. I think we were pretty, so. <laughs> pretty set on the, yeah, the 400 series. From right. Anderson yeah, right yeah. from the get-go. So. Very good. Well, why don't we uh, head upstairs then and All right. take a look at All the top right. floor. Great. So one thing I'm uh, noticing is all the hardwood floor. Um, and I know, you know a lot of people love their carpet. You can get you can get recycled carpet, you can get green label, I believe green label plus certified carpet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what was the choice to mostly, I believe it looks like it for the most part, you've got all um, non-carpeted surfaces in here. It is. Um, it's it's a hundred percent tile or bamboo. Yeah. That's it. There's no carpet anywhere, yeah. and it it was something that we would propose, and it's something that the client wanted to do as well. Mm -hmm. Carpet's just dirty by its nature, and it mm -hmm. collects dust and dirt, and you have to clean it, and you can't. It's hard to clean it, really clean it, and get all the contaminants out of it. So this will be a much more clean. Um, pollen dust free house forever and that's what we decided to do and it's I we try to get away from carpet whenever we can convince our clients that it's the right thing to do. And anywhere that you come in from the house, you come in through you saw the mudroom or the front lobby, it's mm -hmm. all tile. Mudrooms are tile, bathrooms are tile, so anything that has a, any kind of wet space. Mm -hmm. would be an issue. Yeah, that, it's all tile, but it's a durability thing. Sure. And I love bamboo. It's, it looks great, and it's rapidly renewable, and all those good things. Heavy uh, glue laminated wood structure, twin roof deck, and then the sit panels are above this whole area, both in the lower ceiling where I'm standing and in the higher ceiling over the great room. Uh, uh, those ten and a half inch thick, I mean, though, they're amazing. Yeah, yeah. They're just, you can imagine how much insulation is in that much foam. Thicker than a commercial cooler would be in, in the walls of the foam. So just super, super panel system. And the structure set up to manage the spanning capabilities of the SIP panels. So there's efficiency in um, how far the feeds are all apart from each other. So. We, we coordinated all that so that, because the SIP panel can't, it has limitations on how far it can span structurally. So. Mm -hmm. All again, all LED lighting. Um, one feature, um, so the house does have air conditioning and heating, obviously, but if you take a look, so we're at the highest part of the house in the loft space, and if Angela will turn around and look up high, there's three windows up in the clear story. And this is the highest part of the roof. So the roof actually slopes up in two directions up here. And this is a, a thermal chimney. So those three um, windows are awning windows. So you can open them even when it's raining. And they're electrically operated, obviously, because you can't go right, right, right. Yes. And you can open these up and open the windows up on the ground floor. And you can naturally ventilate this whole house bringing in the air from below and letting all the warm air that's naturally convecting upward will all get exhausted out those three windows. So, um, so between that and the fan, you can really reduce your... You just don't need a air seat if the humidity's down. Yeah. You can cool this house passively oh. um, without having to turn on the air conditioning. It's only really the humidity is yeah. probably the only thing that you can't, you can't deal with yeah. with natural ventilation. So this home's been... Uh, um, We've been lived in for how long so far? About 60 days now. Okay. So we're still working on things yeah. and tweaking things and learning how to use the system. And it's been a super hot summer here um, in Michigan and in many other places, uh, as you all may know. That's why <laughs> we're all here. Uh, but uh, but uh, so we'll, we'll hopefully we'll get some feedback to share with everybody about how some of that passive solar uh, or passive cooling is. We, we will, um, and we'll get some, we'll gather, start gathering information on the yeah. solar panels and how much electricity they make and what percentage. Mm -hmm. There's a, Al, you just installed it. What's the monitoring system for the PV? Yeah, it's a, a gateway yeah. monitoring system, but I think, yeah, probably Greg. Yeah. It's basically by uh, Smart Homes, uh, and what it, one of the things we're working on is because you have a standby generator, when the generator is running, the PV is cannot run at the same time, so we had to design a disconnect system for it. And we actually found that by doing a smart uh, home system, we can actually could do that. It also gives the advantage if the homeowner is away from the home, they can actually get on their cell phone, they can get an alarm, you know, to know that their 
house is on generator and the power is out. It also gives them the ability to change the temperature and change all the thermostat settings from remote locations. So if they're not in the home, they can actually do setbacks. So a tremendous amount of ability within that home monitoring system of what you can control and what you can do within the house. And one of the you know disadvantages of typical solar without getting that backup generator is when the grid goes down, you, you can't pull that energy. So now you yeah, have all the ability to cope. Well, well basically, with, with solar, you have two different versions. You have one that's grid connected that has to work in combination. It's much less expensive. And then the second version is you can actually do what's called mm -hmm. a off-grid hybrid system, which can work with the utility or without the utility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to have batteries, but there's a fair amount of expense to that. And a lot of times, it's, rather than doing that, it's actually cheaper to put in a standby generator for those t periods of time rather than uh, doing this uh, solar uh, storage system. And this particular site we knew had issues with power going out, um, thunderstorms and wind in the summer, and definitely um, they've had outages uh, in the area a lot during the winter time. So the backup generator is another mm -hmm. sort of subtle sustainability thing where you can actually stay here and live here even if your power's out in the middle of the winter. So mm -hmm. you don't have to abandon ship and head for a hotel. Right, and probably a little more affordable as of now than like lithium ion and backups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the battery stuff is coming, yeah. for sure, and we're looking at it, but but still, I, for me, it's the battery stuff is not really here to, at a whole house scale level yet, right. I think. But, yeah. And we yeah. have seen the situation already, Greg and Andrew, mm -hmm. where the power went out and the generator mm -hmm. worked great. Yeah, mm -hmm. already so. in the first 60 days. <laughs> yeah. It makes the homeowner uh, appreciate the money they spend on the generator right away, which is always good. It was actually very fun because uh, it happened while we were playing with the electrical system. So originally it was, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to look at some water features? Yeah, let's take a look around the rest of the top. Take a look at some okay. of the plumbing and water yes. structure features. Take a quick peek down the hall. You can see some more of the reclaimed knotty cedar that we saw in the front entryway. Um, we actually used it on the ceiling in the in the hallway here. So again, that's all just wood from actually from the 50s. It was installed in the original cottage and reclaimed. So, wow. but let's walk in around the corner here and we'll look at the some of the water features. So this is a typical bathroom in the house. Uh, it's got low flow everything. It's got low flow faucets, low flow kitchen faucets, low flow shower heads. All the uh, uh, all the plumbing is Kohler which we love to use, beautiful. Um, but it's not just beautiful, it's very water efficient. So really all the shower heads are uh, water efficient faucets. But there's a real, the toilets are really cool dual flush, which I hadn't seen before. It's not the old, um, it's not the old two button thing. So if you look really carefully, there's a, a little tiny lever that gives you the half a flush. And then if you hit the bigger level, you get the full flush. So it's, it's sort of subtle, but once you do it once, it's come so naturally. I think it's a beautiful design um, over the dual flush stuff. So it's, again, it just looks like a normal toilet. Once you use it, you understand the half flush versus the full flush. So very cool. Water savings is pretty straightforward. Um, we did look at things like cisterns and gathering rainwater, but it just ended up, the, the, the math just didn't work. The, uh, we, we couldn't really get the tank big enough. We, we couldn't afford a big enough tank mm -hmm. to really manage it properly, so we opted not to. Right, yeah. yeah. Those I mean, are decisions, and it would be nice, but we just and didn't then do it. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, just the low-flow toilets, the shower heads, the faucets, and uh, Energy Star appliances really take you a long way. Yeah. Um, until we can figure out getting the cost down on some of those. You know, we get calls for gray water system ideas all the time, and it's just like, did you start with a, you know, a lower flow toilet? No. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> so. Gray water is especially challenging right yeah. now. The systems you have to put in to support it, yeah. it's really hard to make it work. Okay. And water is relatively cheap mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. 10 yeah, years from now, or 20 years from now, it might not be, but right now water is relatively cheap. Uh, so that's kind of the water side of it. You look, take a quick look. This is you're actually in the master uh, second floor master suite right now. There's actually master suites on both first and second floors, so the homeowner can choose um, 
to live where they want to live, and their guests can be in the other um, master. So it works out good that uh, if you say you're elderly or you had an injury, you're in a wheelchair or you're on crutches, you can choose to live in the downstairs master. Or if you like the view from the upstairs, you can live up here. And there is an elevator, so the house is fully accessible, fully universal design um, compliant, so you can... Yeah, I noticed that when we first walked in, there was a, uh, what they call a zero-step entrance. Yeah. You know, typically, you've got to get through two, three, four, five steps um, to get, get into a house, right? Right. And, and I noticed the bathroom was walk-in. I assume some of the turning radiuses. Uh, the the five-foot turning radius for a wheelchair is built into all the bathrooms, yeah. even though it's not obvious, and there's not grab bars, but right. you could put grab bars in. But the turning radius, all the doors are three-foot three, three foot doors everywhere in the house. Right. So you can get into every single room um, in a wheelchair or on crutches or however you want to do it. So. Yeah. And so I know for Lee, there's an extra ID point for universal design accessibility. Have you, did you guys look we're at looking at that, and I think we're going to get it. I think yeah. we're going to be able to get it. Okay. Um, we'll get yeah. yeah. But, you know, universal design is huge. And I think it, it needs to get built more into uh, projects because it's just something, you know, it didn't cost you really any extra money or really any time as long as you just thought it through on the design side, right? It didn't. Yeah. It didn't cost us. And, and why would you ever put a right. two-foot, two-inch door in when you can put a three-foot door in yeah. really for almost the same cost? It's, 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 yeah. it's really almost the same. So right. It really is. Just, just do it. Yeah. It's, 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 and I know it, it affects all... Uh, uh, all ages and all people, even if they don't have a particular mobile disability. Right. You know, I look at myself, I live in an urban inner, you know, two-story home in Grand Rapids, and I had a toddler, and just to get around that house um, was, you know, really frustrating, and so I even tell my own life then that to have a zero step and be able to get around is huge, and so I think we're excited to see folks like Michael uh, and other designers just putting it in as a normal part of their plan.